All right. Okay, so we are just wrapping up a production here in Palau, a collection of all islands a couple hours south of Guam by flight. Um, it's a place that not many people have heard of and it has been quite the adventure filming here. Uh, we have filmed on big boats and small boats and traveled in planes and the back of open air pickup trucks and all kinds of stuff. And it's just a crew of two, me and a producer. And so I needed to manage all of the gear from sound, lighting, camera, movement, everything uh, by myself. And I think I may have cracked the code and have the ultimate travel kit. And that's what I wanna walk you through today, show you exactly what's in my bag for this trip because I'll be honest, I'm pretty darn meticulous about every square inch of these bags to make sure that I have exactly what I need, I know where it is, and then I can be as quick as possible, especially on a trip like this. So I'm gonna walk you through uh, these two bags and you can see I only have two. One uh, checked, nope, this is the one you check, and one carry-on. This is also underweight, so you don't have any baggage fees. I've designed this so that you can kind of travel as like a YouTuber, an influencer, uh, that sort of thing. It's under the radar of carnets in most countries. So it makes it easy to get in and out as well as easy to travel once you're there. But let's dive in and look at exactly what's in my bag for this trip for Palau and something I would consider the ultimate travel kit. So over here is the carry-on. And so what you'll see right away, let's start with the main camera, which is the Red Komodo X. We've got that right here. I love this 6K. Uh, so many options, um, such an unbelievable image quality. Pair that with the Canon uh, 28 to 70 RF. This is a big sucker. It's it's pretty expensive, but it's a 28 to 70 f/2. So for documentary coverage, like, ha! Huh, it's amazing what you can do uh, there. Now that is going to need some ND, and so here we have these Freewell NDs which uh, is a variable ND. You have the base that goes on here and then you can kind of do, uh, you can rotate to get the ND you need. And then down here I have one for the Irix lenses, which is the other glass that I have. So I've got just a 30 and a 15. So overall, that means my main camera, I only have, you know, these two prime lenses, 15, 30, and then the 28 to 70. So I don't have very long range, but you know, I want this to be a very kind of intimate story where I'm in the action, so I'm, I'm not doing wildlife birding long lens stuff. Um, but that's it. Three lenses, ND for both, three pockets. That's the main camera. Now, camera number two, when you're coming to a place like this, is gonna be a drone. And so I've got the Mini Pro 4, um, and I'll tell you, I am just blown away at the quality out of something, and, and the, the ability, the controls, the ease of use, everything that you can get out of this little camera. And so I've got the drone here, I've got the controller up here, I've got a pack of three batteries. I would have the uh, ND filters if those were available. Ooh, it's, it's hot here in Palau. Okay, uh, but check out some of this footage. I mean, I'm just shooting in the 10-bit uh, flat profile and like, I'm impressed. I'm, I'm really impressed with what this camera is able to do. And then on top of that, it's just so easy to transport, which I'll get to in a second, how we manage that. Now, on top of that, some, some goodies we have in here. Number one is this uh, Zion Molis 100, X100? I think it's an X100. But this is actually a 100 watt LED light, believe it or not. Um, and it has this little detachable battery, which I'm not gonna be able to show you with uh, only one hand. But you put that on, and you'll notice that this is uh, bicolor and dimmable. Um, you can actually use this as a key light. And so in my other bag, which I'm not gonna show you here, I've got the new Aperture Light Dome, which is like a fold out quick softbox. Um, but that gives you a decent size key light like that you can set up in seconds. I actually use this stand that I'm using the, uh, the iPhone on as my other angle. Uh, I can use, put this light on that stand uh, and just, Unreal what you can do for just quickly, you know, adding a key light to a scene or adding some illumination, not having to re rely on interiors, being smart about, you know, using window light, that sort of thing, but just some minimal options uh, there. Now, on top of that, um, the lid really doesn't have anything super exciting. That's where I've got my media, AirPods Pro, um, some extra batteries for uh, the Osmo Action 4, some audio gear for uh, YouTubing kind of stuff, sensor cleaner, additional cables, all just kind of back up small stuff that goes up here in the top. 
because we also have this camera here uh, and this is the Osmo Action 4. Um, I've been posting about this lately. Really, really wild what this thing's able to do um, just in such a small footprint. Uh, this is much more of like a, a vlogging kind of camera. We wouldn't use this for serious production. However, uh, it was amazing today doing underwater footage for Jellyfish Lake. And so I'll actually just pop this off. It's got the magnetic mount. And so that'll just go right in here in the slot. And so that does mean that I'm getting one, two, three cameras in this one bag, plus a series of, you know, three lenses. Uh, so quite a bit of versatility to be able to shoot in the air, uh, handheld, and all of that sort of thing. Now, I do have a fourth camera, and to do that, we're gonna look into bag number two. Bag number two is like a work of art to me, because this is one Nanook case, and I'm not sure the model number here, but I am just, the, the amount of production gear in one bag. Like, this is everything you need. This is light stands, this is audio, this is everything. Um, and part of what helps is these uh, CRD bags that I found recently on social media. And so they allow you to just add labels and everything, but you know, here's my underwater housing for the Action 4. And then another one labeled audio. I have this Zoom F1 recorder. Man, just super tiny, 32-bit audio. Um, but bringing that with an XLR cable, which I have, up here in the lid and then my Shope's mic and windscreen I can basically set this up uh, and use this stand that I'm using here uh, for a little tabletop mic and I've got another little you know selfie stand here which I'm not using as a selfie stick but I'm using to hold a small light or to uh, hold a shotgun mic but I can actually you know put that up on a table and, and get great audio if there's you know we did a lot of audio only interviews and we did some where it was audio and video uh, but I don't have the room to take a whole overhead boom and all of that kind of stuff and so uh, being able to just wire that up and set it up out of frame I do have one other mic and actually that's this little pouch here because so I always want to have audio on me I always want to have the option in case I run into you know a character a story and uh, something where you just need great sound. I hate to, you know, have that back at the hotel or somewhere else. Um, so I always have something on me and I didn't always have this bag because, you know, if you're hiking, this is this is not gonna be fun to travel with. Uh, so this little Porta Brace has a tentacle sink uh, with a Countryman lav and undercovers. And so this is gonna allow me to sink to the red with time code if I'm running long. Uh, these little undercover, you know, stickies here. Looks like I use most of them, uh, but just, belt pads and sticky pads with the Countryman mic that allows you to hide it under your shirt. Uh, I'd show you that, but I'm actually using it right now for the audio. But that does mean that I have audio as well in this kit, just hidden away, nice and small. And then I've got more of a boom solution, which also, we've got the, the uh, switch pod here as another option to hold a light, to hold the camera. But then there's the more advanced audio bag here. Um, and this is gonna have an XLR box for the RED camera. So if I wanted to do on camera audio, so now I'm you know, in the field and need to kind of get some natural sounds as we're doing that, I can mount the XLR box, I can mount the Shopes mic and, uh, and an arm on there and get just amazing audio quality. And I know the RED doesn't have the best preamps, but we have tested it and with the you know, tools available now to clean up your sound and everything else, um, it is more than passable. So, that bag has all everything I need to then adapt and get audio on camera, should I want to do that. Um, but now I've got interview audio, I've got kind of run and gun audio that I'm wearing now, a couple random grip parts here. Then I told you that I had a fourth camera, which is the Sony FX3. And so um, bringing this, you know, long hike and don't really want to carry the red, uh, more volatile conditions, don't want to damage the red. Plus it does have in-body stabilization. So it's going to let you get a little bit of like movements and that sort of thing um, and, and take out some of that shake where the, the red doesn't have that. And I'd often use more of a 48 or 60 frames per second as a way of smoothing out any handheld uh, wet and wear relevant for the story. But the FX3 I've got with two lenses, a 24 to 70, again, kind of a nice all around option when I'm out here documenting all kinds of things. And then a second lens in here, which is 16 to 35 F4. So another option for super wide shots. I did not bring a gimbal and uh, it was on the line and I know a lot of y'all love your gimbals. Uh, I enjoy a solid gimbal as well. Um, however, uh, with the in-body stabilization and knowing that I had the drone with me, 
I actually left it at home not thinking I would need more movement than I could get with a natural handheld, more documentary kind of in the field feeling, uh, plus whatever else I had. So no gimbal, just relying on the stabilization of this, this, uh, the off speed here. Um, and then that's it. So here is a little diffuser for the uh, Zion light. So you can just pop that on if you want to for the Molus 100, uh, if you want to soften that. And then there's also a soft box for that light. Um, and I think this comes in the Pro Kit. Uh, and it just, isn't it cute? Look at how cute that is. And you just go like that, boom, and that just pops up. And there you go. Uh, and you know, it's small, so it's not gonna give you the softest light, but you do have to remember that uh, your softness of your light is re re is related to the apparent size of the light compared to your subject. I know that sounds super wordy of apparent size and blah, blah, blah. Uh, to cut to the chase, it means if you move your light closer, the apparent size is larger and it gets softer. So the key with a small softbox like that is just to get it really close, like, you know, to what you're filming and it will be quite soft. I also have that Aperture Mini Light Dome, which packs down, that goes in with my clothes, but that gives me uh, another option. Um, okay, up here, really boring stuff. I got my V-Lock charger. Uh, and then this last light I'll show you here is the Zion uh, Molus 200, which has like a max mode where it can go into 300 watts for a brief period. I don't really know exactly how long, um, but just crazy how small it is. Bicolor, dimmable, right? Look at that, look at that. I mean, just also quite cute. Um, and it does have a ballast that you then, you know, you hook up this ballast and what that helps with is, you know, keeping the actual fixture itself rather light. So. Overall, for lighting, I have the Molus 200, which is gonna be you know, more of an ambient fill. I could do a background. I could do a key light, but it's more than I often need you know, as a key light. Uh, and then I have the Molus 100, and then to, together I can get a you know, foreground background, that sort of thing. Um, I've got the you know, just dome here. I've got the softbox. And then up here in the lid, you know, mostly this is just random accessories, cables, red tools, you know, different things to help you if you get into trouble. But up here in the top, I've got one of my XLR cable for audio, two, a reflector. Uh, always need a reflector when you're shooting this much outside, be able to bounce or cut light, that sort of thing. But this one, this one I'm really proud of. And this was the key to cracking how to get all of this into two bags and be able to do, you know, interviews and everything else. And if I dig down in back of here, I actually have light stands. And these are like a no-name brand from Amazon. Best N Photo. I don't know. But they weren't expensive, but they're carbon fiber. So this is like, I don't know. It, it feels like it's, it's you know, maybe a, a pound. Like it's super light. So I actually have two of these. And then I've got adapters to go from uh, the different thread sizes. So that I can mount the Molus directly on there. Either light on there. Um, I can mount the audio on here. Um, all kinds of options. And then I have this one other CRD bag here with grip pieces. And this has got two clamps, uh, which are small enough allowing me to clamp uh, this camera or the light, you know, other things. Again, just because I'm not bringing a whole lighting bag. So I don't have a ton of stands and stuff until you've got to be creative in how you approach things. Uh, but the collection together allows me to get great audio, to get a variety of visuals from, you know, red to drone to the, it just died. That's okay. iPhone, we still got the iPhone. We'll figure a way through it. So in closing, that's my ultimate kit. I'm super excited about this to get it down to just two bags, which means with my luggage, I can carry everything without a cart. I can roll it by myself. I do have one other carry on that's got DIT, that's got my laptop, my SSDs, everything else. But you know, you can do some pretty incredible stuff. And I'll include a little bit of footage of what we got on this trip. So you can see just how much you can achieve, not just exteriors and natural light, but when you need to modify light, when you need to add sound, even, you know, setting up an interview where I put the FX3 on the switch pod, use the autofocus of the Sony FX3, um, used a simple aperture softbox key light on the Molus at 200, and then use the 100 as a background light, you know, setting up in 10 minutes. And is it the best interview I've ever done? No, well, of course not. I'm here, you know, but it certainly is way better than what would have happened if I didn't have any of that. Uh, and I was able to do it by myself. Audio, camera, lighting, everything else, you know, very quickly. So, uh, 
I hope you like this walkthrough of the, uh, the meticulous packing that went into both of these gear bags to get them down under weight. And then on top of that, my secret weapon, this little bag here that I can fit whatever I need for the day in. So I can actually get the drone in here, I can get the FX3 in here, I can get a spare lens in here, I can get spare batteries. So whenever I go out, I can even wear it on the front like this. Uh, but you know, great for being able to just pack for the day or pack for a trip, put whatever, whatever you need in there. Um, and just all together, it makes me incredibly efficient, able to stay in front of the action and uh, you know, be able to get results that are far larger than you might imagine being uh, you know, crew of one in terms of production here and uh, all the challenges that we're up against. So I hope that helped, hope that gives you some ideas and here's a look at what's in my bag for this trip here in Palau.